The first lap of the race was extremely hectic and gave us our first ever additions to the crunch count as Giancarlo Fisichella got flipped up in the air and uh, off into the gravel trap. Another addition to the crunch count is Felipe Massa who lost control on the extra turn 1 on the opening lap and shunted into the tyre wall leaving himself with a lot of work to do in the remainder of the race and I tell you what, that is going to cost him far more than just one championship point. There's also a blink and you'll miss it moment at the edge of the screen as future champions Button and Vettel come together, sending Vettel spinning across the track without his front wing. During that he also collected Kazuki Nakajima who carried on without his front wing and ended up contributing our fourth crunch to the count in just three corners when he was run into by Anthony Davidson and Mark Webber, sending Davidson into the barrier. For a race of attrition such as this one, it's been a while since we've had an addition to the crunch count as off goes Coulthard. That's a very mangled Red Bull. In fact, it's the last time until career 2010 that both Red Bulls will be taken out of a race. And he pitted at what proved to be exactly the right time as Timo Glock smashed up his car and brought out a safety car. Uh, I'll give that a 7.5 for the jump, a 6 for the landing, and uh, an 8 for the spins. The final crunch of the day comes courtesy of Kazuki Nakajima running into the back of Robert Kubica behind the safety car. This put the Polish driver out of the race and dropped the Japanese driver to a lap down. We get our first addition to the crunch count further back as Daniel Ricciardo and Felipe Massa come together lightly, sending the honey badger for a little bunny hop. Honey hop? Yes. Speak of the devil, here's a move at the same corner from Lewis Hamilton around the outside of Felipe Massa, and they do actually contribute to our crunch count. Yeah, I am counting all forms of contact just to keep the rules black and white. <gasps> a spinning force India, but how could this be? Oh, okay, never mind, it's Maldonado. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A front wing failure for Nico Hulkenberg on lap 43 sent him into the barrier and brought out the virtual safety car. More importantly, of course, he added to our crunch count. Rosberg passed Raikkonen into turn 1, but watch in the background as Ricardo goes around the outside of Lewis Hamilton and the two of them touch wheels, adding to our crunch count. It's James. Top 3 were still close and Ricardo decided he really liked the taste of stamps, licking another one and diving up the inside of Rosberg who came straight back over on him and smashed the front wing of the Red Bull. Rosberg picked up a puncture and scuppered any last chance he might have had of winning the Grand Prix. We did finally get an addition to the crunch count and it's a bonus because it's teammates with Hakkinen getting into the back of Coulthard and spinning him around. We also got another addition as Pedro de Niz got together with one of the Arrows cars and spun into the gravel and out of the race. When his engine failed on lap 14, he did this. Ready? Also look in the background as we get our first addition to the crunch count with Philippe Alliot going spearing into the wall after tangling with another car. There was then a strange addition to the crunch count when Christian Danner blew an engine, locked the rear axle and spun into the barriers on the straight. And then they just kind of left the car there for the rest of the race? What? I mean, I know this was standard procedure for the 80s, but still, quite safety at all back in those days, gosh. And that's our third addition to the crunch count with Ivan Capelli spinning his march at 130R and nosing into the wall off camera. When the race started, two cars stalled at the back who I think were Patrick Tombe and Andrea de Cesaris, but it's hard to tell, as at the front it was Mansell who led into turn 1 ahead of Senna and Prost. Meanwhile, there was a crash at the back as Pierre Carlo Ginzani, the youngest driver in the field, had an off-screen incident on the very first lap of the race in the only Arcella car. Now watch this, how's this for a precise kiss of the wall? Look at this, and swipe! You're coming with me, Mr. Tyre. We get our third addition to the crunch count, oh my goodness me, and almost our fourth as well, as Patrick Tombe loses control and stuffs his Renault, almost taking out Mark Shearer while trying to get to a safe space. On the replay, we can see how the rear end just broke away away from him as he passed from turn 8 onto Larned Street, and suddenly he had two rear wheels pointing in different directions. Never an ideal thing to have on a Formula 1 car. Talking of Thrance, that's Prust! He's gone off at the same corner as Monsieur Tambe. The replay shows that he just locked up and went straight on into the wall. Whether this was due to his wrist like the commentators thought, his brakes like his team thought, or his concentration like I think, we may never know, but the eventual world champion was out of the race for sure. Oh! Oh come on, seriously? That was... until this happened. Ugh, 
Philip Allier saw the blue flags and he saw the red Ferrari, but he didn't expect there to be a Tyrrell in hot pursuit. Meanwhile, Senna had caught Alboreto and was going for third, but he locked up and bang, into the wall. 10-8 had claimed another victim and its third future world champion in one day. After an uneventful start to the race, the first proper casualty came on lap 9 when Nigel Mansell spun into the catch fencing, kicking off today's crunch current. Oh, come on, chaps. The car's a piece of rubbish. I've only had one podium this year. Today I had to start from 21st. And now I can't even finish. The car's all broken. Ah, I need a drink. Watch in the background now as we get our first addition to the crunch count as Jos Verstappen stuffs it into the wall trying to go around the outside of Villeneuve and Hakkinen. Verstappen was out of the race at the same spot that his son would crash into 19 years later, and both Minardis followed him off in sympathy. Here's one, but for some reason I couldn't find where the other one ended up at all. Here's the next casualty and it's Schumacher! And the crunch count still keeps racking up victims. The first lap claimed Verstappen, Fisichella, Lamy, Schumacher, and now Barrichello in the Jordan as well, with Ikio Katayama adding to that list just two laps later. Shout out to the Marshals for keeping everything running under green flag conditions. Ricardo Rossett was famous for his hazardous antics at Monaco in the 1998 event, but in 1996 at least he managed to qualify before throwing it into the wall. Anyway, before long, the inevitable happened, and Frentzen ran into the back of Irvine. Look at his front wing there, it's hanging off, and Frentzen had to make a pit stop. Surprisingly, by this stage we'd actually gone 27 laps without someone crashing out, until Martin Brundle remembered what race this was, and joined his teammate Barrichello on the crunch count. He knows he's there now! Gosh darn it. It may have been the slowest collision in F1 history, but it's still going on our crunch count because rules are rules. The 40 Corsa driver of Luca Badoa was still running in the race with a chance of points, but that all ended when he turned in on Jack Villeneuve, who was trying to lap him. Flashy flashy, crashy crashy. Two very damaged cars, and an irritated Villeneuve who would have gained three points on Hill had he finished. It was a blind corner, meaning that he couldn't see who was coming around the bend, and as he tried to resume, he was ploughed into by both Hakkinen and Salo, who had recently swapped places again. We then got our very first addition to the crunch count, as Carl Vindlager lost control at Stowe and stuffed his sour into the wall, luckily less hurt than Schumacher would do six years later. Next up is a segment I like to call Backmarkers Being Backmarkers, as Andrea de Cesaris and Luca Badoa collide, luckily getting away with minimal damage. He lined up his move into Virage du Pont and... Whee! After 41 laps of clean racing, the lead battle had finally snapped, as Weber and Barrichello lightly touched in turn 1. Now watch as Bernaldi emerges with wing damage, and crucially so does Coulthard, further damaging his already painful race. The first retirements came after just a few laps with this collision between Frentzen and De La Rosa. This was actually De La Rosa's first race for Jaguar, replacing Luciano Berti who had gone to Prost. Surprisingly, there was no safety car. It looked like it would be a clean first lap, but Barrichello got greedy into the hairpin and knocked his front wing off on the back of Coulthard's car. Montoya temporarily had two wings, granting him double the downforce. Raikkonen had made his pit stop and was catching Schumacher for the effective lead. He got within one second and deployed the DRS before forgetting it hadn't been invented yet, which he realised with a race ending thud. As further back, the Jordans were being silliums. But if you look closely, you can see the Williams is actually touched up front. Yes, that's going on the crunch count. Rules are rules. He held Coulthard off into the Dunlop hairpin, but the pressure didn't cease, and David went for it in turn one. And they came together! Montoya spun the car around, breaking both of their suspensions and taking them both out of the race. David is furious! Later on in the lap, Pierluigi Martini became the first addition to the crunch count, because that's just what Monaco does. Oh no, there's our second crash, and it's Stefano Modena. How are they going to get that car out of the way, I wonder? Yoink! As all of those drivers know, Monaco breeds desperation, and the inexperienced Michael Schumacher got all sorts of desperate in his fight with Jean Alesi, ramming him at the hairpin in a move reminiscent of Parnas on Irvine four years later. Oh, and speaking of chaotic, it looks like Johnny Herbert crashed his Lotus. Whoopsie daisy, how is this for a unique view of Monaco? Anyway, whoa, Nelly! Oh. 
What you just saw was Taki Inui ending his Formula 1 career in the most Inui of ways, with a high speed spin into the wall. He misjudged the entry and crashed into the pit wall. In Coulthard's defence, it was quite slippery in the pit lane that day, as demonstrated here by Roberto Moreno. And the accidents came thick and fast, that's Rubens Barrichello often into the tyres. Now here we are later on in the lap, and they've collided! Alacy simply turned in on Schumacher, and they both have damage! Meanwhile, if you're interested in how Michael Schumacher is doing, he's running down in 13th place and making a move on Clean. Oh, oh my goodness. Here's what happened to Ralph to cause this whole mess, with David Coulthard coming up the inside and colliding with him, 2018 Toro Rosso style. But watch as Yano Trilli spears across and plows into a Lacey and Barrichello. Shades of the starting crash from the previous year, but with less flipping, of course. The second crash of the day came straight away as well, as Ricardo Zonta took his zipper liveried BAR and made it even more half and half by smashing up the right side. The first champion to go was Damon Hill, who had been off the pace all weekend and decided to try being off the track as well. Anyway, you all know what happens next. Michael Schumacher crashes out from a commanding lead. Kaboom! Amazingly, the hungry wall wasn't done yet as it claimed its third champion of the day, Jacques Villeneuve. When the race restarted, Irvine was distracted by the backmarkers and Coulthard was able to drive right around the outside of him. But they touched! Irvine spun and Coulthard found himself off the road and in the grass. Sadly, Heinz Harold Frentzen was not able to finish on the podium in a race where he did so well, as his brakes failed at high speed, causing him to crash heavily. Suddenly, everyone found themselves looking upwards as Nicola Larini found himself flying through the air. That is a notoriously dangerous curve, and Lorini was lucky to get away without having a huge accident. Someone who wasn't quite so lucky was Satoru Nakajima, whose brakes failed and forced him out of the race and onto my crunch count. The brakes had failed on his McLaren in exactly the same way that Nakajima's had, and Ayrton made it no further. And whoa, Verts going for a flip! Herbert, Trilly, and Alacy, and of course Verts are all off in the gravel. Ralph locked up and got onto the grass, spinning back onto the circuit, and there was carnage behind, watched the two arrows as they tried to rejoin the track after cutting across the grass, and they forced Verts, Trilly, and Alacy to glide once again! Mika Salo wasn't having much luck either, ouch. Now watch as Esteban Tuero runs into the back of Jacques Villeneuve after misjudging the Canadian's trajectory. Tuero was forced to pit, but his teammate Shinji Nakano was now up to 5th from 18th on the grid. Suddenly, the first major event of the race occurred as Alan McNish crashed out of 9th place and ended his chance of points. The Scotsman had actually recently moved to the Principality when this race took place, so luckily for him it was only a short walk home for an early bath. A few laps later, off went Takuma Sato in a big way, smashing his car against the barriers down towards the hairpin. But Massa locked up into turn one and they collided, just keeping it out of the wall. Both of these young Brazilians were renowned at the time for being quite hot-headed, although I'm afraid to say that was completely Massa's fault. And another shunt, and it's Alex Jung. See what I mean about dropping like flies? As for his teammate, who was running a little further back, kaboom! That's Barrichello running straight up the back of Raikkonen! Fisichella then made his stop from 6th place, but look at this silliness on pit exit! That's Button and Parnas both in the wall at turn 1! Honestly, this is the kind of mayhem that just doesn't happen anymore at Monaco. I don't know why for sure, but nowadays drivers just don't tend to go for this sort of silly move that results in this kind of outcome anymore, even though we have DRS on that front straight now. One driver who wasn't so lucky was Felipe Massa, who locked his front brakes going to turn 1 and slammed into the wall, possibly as a result of a brake failure or possibly as a result of damage from his earlier collision. Say, what is it with Massa and Sander Vaught? He crashed there twice in 2013 and twice in 2002 as well. The final person to crash out was Mika Salo, losing his chance of points and making this a very expensive day for the Toyota team. This accident was also reportedly caused by a brake failure, and somehow the safety car still didn't show despite Mika's car ending up on the track on the outside of a fast corner where cars had already run wide that day, at a time in the race when cars were prone to brake failures. On lap 5, off went Ayrton Senna! His rear wing fell completely and flew off the car, which is one of the worst things that can happen to a driver at the Hockenheim ring. He hit the wall hard, but luckily was perfectly alright. 
Meanwhile, that's Damon Hill, who apparently collided with an arrows car while in the pit lane. He had an off, but then tore back to the pits with a puncture. There we had the first issue of the race, as Gerhard Berger went straight on and picked up a little bit of damage to the underside of his car. And there's a problem for the other McLaren. On lap 10, Berger added himself to the crunch camp for the second time, this time ending his disastrous race on the spot. The next crash came courtesy of Aguri Suzuki, who had a minor brake failure coming into Sandefort. This would have been just his second podium in F1, and surely the greatest drive in his F1 career. And that's Petrezi! He was going to take second place, but spun off on the oil dropped by Modena's car and hit the wall. And speaking of crashing, off went Mark Blundell right behind Modena and Petrezi. Amazingly, the race continued uninterrupted despite the obvious danger. Now, whoa, watch further back as David Coulthard loses control and comes straight at the camera like we're watching a cheesy 3D movie. A big crash and a very second-hand Red Bull. Nakajima's onboard shows how Coulthard braked way too late for Turn 1 and hit Vettel before spinning into Nakajima who lost his front wing. The second hit also had the effect of breaking Coulthard's rear right suspension, which caused that extreme near miss as he flew right across the nose of the bewildered Williams driver. On lap 2, Massa ran wide into the chicane and Hamilton went for it, but Massa refused, oh and they collided! Lewis was spun around and somehow avoided by everyone, and he rejoined in 18th position. Here's something I can add to the crunch count though, I'm pretty sure Fisichella ran into the back of Button on the straight, and Bordet pitted too, and crashed straight into the side of Massa! Suddenly there was drama as Montoya and Schumacher came together for the second race in a row, the front wing went flying! It was a horrible reversal of fortune for Montoya, who had been taken out of the lead in the previous year's Grand Prix by being run into at that very section of track. Further back, two promising young rookies were fighting, but that's no way to race! Weber and Massa collided, sending the Sauber out of the Grand Prix. Three Brazilians had started this race, but Barrichello, Bernoldi, and Massa were all DNFs. That point became two points with three laps to go due to this huge off for Kimi Raikkonen. The McLaren driver flew through the gravel trap, smashing up his rear suspension and taking himself out of fourth place. This elevated Mika Salo up to sixth place, who was doing an awesome job for the new Toyota team and heading for a point. Then there was carnage at the first chicane! Look in the background as Pedro Diniz flips over and digs into the grass, a monstrous shunt! On lap 11, this happened, a collision between Zanardi and Takagi that caused the Williams driver's engine to stall. It looks to me as if Takagi had already had an incident with a Lacey who was moving slowly in the background, and then he didn't realise that there were two cars on his inside as Zanardi and Zonta came through together. You could also ask the leader, of course! Off went David Coulthard from the lead of the race, through the gravel, and even though he only lightly nudged the tyres, he was out as well. Ralph Schumacher took the lead, and remember, this is Ralph Schumacher, not Michael. He was yet to win a race up to this point. That, of course, did not include Turanosuke Takagi, who ended his chance of points by slamming into the wall. This was a fairly dangerous crash, considering that one of the wheels then started to meander back onto the track, but luckily it was avoided by all, and the race continued. And there's our first addition to the crunch count. It's honestly quite amazing that we got over halfway through this race, to be honest, but that's Luca Badoa bouncing over the gravel and losing his front wing, which counts in my book. On lap 29, off went Ukio Katayama in a big way, hitting the wall and losing a rare chance of points. This brought out the safety car, which was a rare sight to see in the 90s, but obviously the right thing to do considering the conditions. Then there was very nearly drama as the two Ferraris touched, forcing Barrichello to run wide, and in the chain reaction behind, Coulthard and Trilli came together too. Back on the grid, championship leader Kimi Raikkonen hadn't even reached the start line, as he'd run into the back of the stalled Jaguar of Antonio Pizzonia. Three separate collisions in just two corners, and of course the safety car was called. We're going to fast forward a few laps now as Coulthard and Button collide! David had been fighting hard to make his way back up through the field, but all of a sudden he was beached and out of the race at the same chicane that he'd had his incident at in the first place. On lap 11, Michael Schumacher pitted for dry tyres and then immediately crashed at high speed! Michael himself claimed that it was a car problem, but whether it was or not didn't matter because the result was his second accident of the weekend. That gave second place to a Lacey... Ooh, but they nearly crashed! He went for a dummy into Tosa and ran straight into the back of him. That's a front wing airmailed straight to the moon, and Mansell had a puncture, but this allowed Hakkinen to fly through into the lead. Then there was drama as Fisichella ran into the back of Schumacher at Turn 1, taking out the championship leader in his home Grand Prix. 
Then, just to make sure Ralph wouldn't come back at his teammate, the other BAR of Zonta ran straight into the back of the Williams, spinning him around and forcing Verstappen to take avoiding action. Suddenly, there was a much bigger accident in the pack as Deniz and Alacy made contact, causing the Prost driver to spear off into the barriers and spin violently. Meanwhile, here's the two BAR drivers committing the cardinal sin of running into each other, and round and round and round again win Villeneuve on the greasy track. That's a 10 for style, for sure. Up in front, Montoya kept the lead, as there was contact at the back between Albers and Katakayan. I'm also going to bring the crunch count up to 2 due to this little kerfuffle I spotted. Coulthard damaged his front wing on the back of Fisichella's car, causing Weber to run into the back of him and damage his own front wing. And there's the first crunch count. It was never going to be long, especially in these conditions, and this time it's Barrichello and Davidson who collide. That was one of the wheels from Ralph Schumacher's car going on strike in the pit lane, as I would if I'd seen someone driving like this. Here's why the yellow flags were out of that corner in the first place, by the way. That's Ralph Schumacher spinning off and retiring at the same corner where he had a bizarre spin in 2004, and you see the barriers shake as Adrian Sittil decides to upstage Ralph and have a proper accident. As further down the field there was a collision as Villeneuve knocked his front wing off on the back of an Arrows car. Meanwhile, here's a spin for Johnny Herbert, and after watching it in slow motion, I can confirm that he did tag Villeneuve's rear tyre on the way round, so onto the crunch count it goes. But all of a sudden they had to take avoiding action as two wrecked cars appeared out of the spray. Hmm, I wonder why we're about to look at an innocuous video of a Minardi driving in a completely straight line. Nothing could possibly go wrong- whoop, oh my god. Worse was to come for his teammate Mansell though, as he spun dramatically in the spray and clobbered the wall, ending his race on the spot. This effectively crowned McLaren Constructors' Champions, as it elevated them to first and second as their main rivals struggled. Now watch at the back of the field as Tombe runs into the back of Gerhard Berger, and both retire at the very first corner of the race. Talking of crashing, here's the fight for ninth place between Patrese and Piquet, and wallop! Off they both go in a shower of sparks! Piquet had been going for a move on Patrese, Patrese attempted to take his line as normal, and the crash dropped litres of oil on the road, which caused both Lafitte and Fabi to spin off behind them. On the next lap, Nicky Lauda also fell foul of the oil, nudging the barrier and stalling the car. Senna led, and in the midfield there was drama as Nakajima was spun around by Brundle. The Lotus then got stuck in the rough grass, as ahead of him there were problems for Andrea de Cesaris. Who else? Worse was to come at the Peral Tarda though, as Modena, Griad and Caffey all went off, and before long the red flags were flying. Then on lap 35, things went from bad to extremely bad for Glock, as he smashed into the wall at high speed. The cars behind him weave left and right, but luckily managed to avoid both Glock and the shards of debris flying all over the place. A replay showed that his rear right suspension had failed, sending him violently across the track, and clearly at that point there was nothing he could do. One thing I noticed when watching this race back was that Timo had been taking a lot of curves prior to this accident. Further back in the field, David Coulthard and Rubens Barrichello decided that they hadn't been on camera enough yet, and promptly crashed into each other. Rubens lost his front wing and ended up retiring due to the damage, while Coulthard carried on sheepishly. Also making a good start was Fisichella, but there was drama in the mid-pack as a front wing went flying and then off went Irvine! And so was Jan Magnussen, who seemingly had a separate accident off-screen. But not for long! Look! That's Villeneuve, who spun out of the final chicane and impacted the Quebec wall on just the second lap of the race. The drama then continued as Ukiyo Katayama had a throttle issue and hit the wall hard, bringing out the safety car. In all honesty, he's lucky his throttle didn't fully stick open heading into the hairpin. That would have been a horror crash. The crunch count claimed another victim on lap 15, and that's Ralph Schumacher from 5th place! Bang! Wow! Something clearly went wrong under braking, and the car slid down the barrier, and that's a big hit. I've also just noticed that Rubens has some damage to his nose, which I think may have happened as the field bunched up into turn 1, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to the crunch count. I know we didn't see the contact, but it must have happened, so rules are rules, onto the count it goes. However, much worse was to come for the race. On lap 52, Olivier Panis had a rear suspension failure and lost the car, grazing the inside wall before spinning across the track and into the tyre wall at a nasty angle. 
The car came to a stop very quickly indeed, and Olivier Panis had both of his legs broken. There was no contact, although the crunch count wouldn't have to wait long before claiming Gabrielli Tarquini and his AGS. But now watch Hakkinen coming through to third. A little nudge and around goes Senna, and off as well goes Larini in the Ferrari. But he almost had an incident of his own as he made light contact with a Simtech while trying to lap it. That's Roland Ratzenberger making his first and sadly only Formula 1 start. Rest in peace. A replay shows how Alboreto was up alongside Venlager and then jiggle jiggled his way straight into the side of the Sauber. Bang! That's a scary incident, and yet another example of why F1 cars of this era desperately needed higher cockpit sides, and just more driver protection in general. Senna ran wide on some oil dust, very nearly throwing away his second position and allowing Berger to close right up, and what was that? Oh, it was Rubens Barrichello on only three wheels. Another thing that doesn't help with scoring points is clashing wheels with a Minardi, which is exactly what Gianna Lacey did on lap 23. It was the lightest of touches, but both Alacy and Christian Fittipaldi were out of the race, and Alacy got the worst of it as his car flew through the air and through the gravel trap, eventually reaching the barriers. Herbert was out of the race, and so was Luca Badoa, who spun into the wall at around the same time, and he was keen to make up places. Perhaps a little too keen? Goodness me! Talking of the crunch count, that's Pierluigi Martini, and that's a big shame! Into the chicane, bang! There goes his front wing! Oh, but look at this! Montoya has caught up to Schumacher, and he's going around the outside! Oh, contact! And around goes Schumacher! That didn't work, Michael. You hit the wrong part of him, my friend. Looking back into the field, I'm going to add one to the crunch count for this light contact I spotted between Warwick and Arnu. And you can tell by the way the field bunches up that Arnu must have had a quick pirouette before rejoining the race. Talking of graphic, that is a stripped Formula 1 car, and that's Jonathan Palmer who had been leading the naturally aspirated cars. Then there was contact as Bourdais gave a shove to the fast starting Toyota of Trulli. Oh, and a puff of smoke for good measure. Here's a replay of the start then, and if you look at the back you'll see the contact between Nakajima and Fisichella. There was then secondary contact as Nakajima lit up his rear tyres and spun, giving the Force India driver absolutely nowhere to go. I know they collided twice here, but since it all happened in the same corner, I'm only adding it to the crunch count once. Whatever the case, the result was the same, with Giancarlo having to pit for a new front wing. Unfortunately, it all went wrong on lap 10 as he tried to pass Weber for 6th and there was contact! By the way, I've heard that PK's changed onto dry tyres. I wonder how he's doing- Oh. Oh. Yeah. There was a little touch which I'm going to have to add to the crunch count. Through Blanchemont they go at a snail's pace, but watch Kimi as he goes wide again, hits a bump and spins, and this time he does not avoid the wall. A devastating shunt for the four-time Belgian Grand Prix winner.